Hi there, Marius here with the Resuscitation Coach. On this channel we do all things resuscitation, so please consider subscribing. In today's video we'll be discussing ECGs specifically for your NCLEX preparation. So let's jump straight in. Here we go. So let's look at a normal sinus rhythm. First of all, the rate is 60 to 100 per minute, as it originates from the SA node, which fires at a rate of 60 to 100. The rhythm is regular, meaning your R to R distances or intervals are constant, P waves are present, and we see one positive or upright P wave in lead 2 for every QRS and vice versa, meaning one to one conduction. The PR interval is three to five small boxes, meaning 0.12 to 0.2 seconds. The QRS complex is narrow, meaning three boxes or 0.12 seconds or less. Here we see a normal sinus rhythm at the rate of 69. Treatment is not required as this is a healthy patient. Just make sure that you monitor your patient. Sinus bradycardia looks the same as a normal sinus rhythm, but the rate is less than 60 beats per minute. The rhythm is regular, P waves are present, the PR interval is three to five small boxes, and the QRS complex is narrow. Here we see a sinus bradycardi at a rate of 46 beats per minute. Sinus bradycardia with rates greater than 50 beats per minute may be well tolerated by healthy adults. Athletes may routinely be in sinus bradycardia due to an optimal stroke volume that requires a lower heart rate. It may also be associated with vagal stimulation or due to sick sinus syndrome. Treatment is only required for symptomatic sinus bradycardia where you might see shortness of breath, chest discomfort and low perfusion for example. The patient can appear pale, cool and clammy with a low blood pressure, to mention a few. Pathological causes of sinus bradycardia can include acute myocardial infarction, drugs, for example, beta blockers or calcium channel blockers, raised intracranial pressure, hypothermia, and also hypothyroidism. First-line treatment, which is important for your NCLEX, includes atropine, 1 mg as per the 2020 American Heart Association guidelines. See our bradycardia video for more in-depth review of bradycardia. Sinus tachycardia looks exactly like a normal sinus rhythm, but this time the rate is above 100 beats per minute, the rhythm is regular, P waves are present, the PR interval is three to five small boxes, and the QRS complex is narrow. Here we have a sinus tachycardia at a rate of 109 beats per minute. Sinus tachycardia can be caused by exertion, anxiety, hypovolemia, and hypoxia, to mention a few. Treat the causes of the tachycardia. Here we see VF, which is a cardiac arrest rhythm. VF is a result of chaotic electrical activity in the ventricles. The number one treatment for VFIP is DFIP. Defibrillation is your priority over medications. Don't forget to perform high quality CPR. The medications used for ventricular fibrillation includes epinephrine, amiodarone, 
and lidocaine. Remember that epinephrine is always the first drug given in any cardiac arrest management, but in VF and pulseless ventricular tachycardia, the number one treatment is always DFib, then high quality CPR, then your medication. Some causes of VF can include untreated ventricular tachycardia, postmyocardial infarction, electrolyte imbalances, and patients on proarrhythmic medications. What would you call this ECG? Here we see three PVCs in a row. Yes, it's a ventricular tachycardia. Ventricular tachycardia is a tachycardia that originates in the ventricles. It is defined as three or more consecutive PVCs in a row, occurring at a rate of 150 to 250 beats per minute. This is called a run of VT. This slide illustrates monomorphic ventricular tachycardia. VT can be sustained and usually degenerates into VF or non-sustained. Treatment is initiated based on the clinical presentation. If you see this rhythm, what should be the first thing you do? That's correct. Check for a pulse, as this can be pulseless ventricular tachycardia, which will require immediate defibrillation and high quality CPR. Or it could be a VT with a pulse that could be either stable or unstable and requires synchronized cardioversion. The rhythm is regular, P waves are usually not seen, the PR interval is non-applicable, and the QRS complex is wide. Causes of ventricular tachycardia includes hypoxia, post-MI, low potassium, and low magnesium. Again, remember that for pulseless VTAC, you will perform defibrillation, and for an unstable VTAC with a pulse, you perform synchronized cardioversion. Let's review a sample of polymorphic ventricular tachycardia called torsades de pointe. The QRS complex appear in a spiral pattern around the baseline. In French, it means twisting at the points. The rate is variable between 250 to 350. The outline of torsades appears like a twisted ribbon. The main treatment for torsades is magnesium. Let's look at asystole, meaning there is no electrical activity in the heart. Asystole is the last rhythm that we typically see. Keep in mind that asystole is not a straight line like what we see in all medical movies and TV shows. For asystole, we will perform high-quality CPR and give epinephrine. Atrial fibrillation, or AF, is the rhythm that we see regularly in practice. This is a very fast atrial rate arising from many irritable focuses all over the atria. The fibrillatory waves assume different shapes as they are coming from different foci in the atria. The causes the muscles of the atria to quiver or fibrillate, which results in ineffective atrial contraction, subsequent decrease in cardiac output, and loss of atrial kick. Some of the causes of atrial infibulation can include ischemic heart disease, valvular disease, alcohol misuse, sick sinus syndrome, post-cardiac surgery, chronic pulmonary disease, to mention a few. The rate is 350 to 450. The rhythm is irregularly irregular. Listen closely. The rhythm is irregularly irregular. You will notice that the R to R interval distance are constantly changing. P waves are absent and we only see fibrillation waves. The PR interval is not possible and the QRS complex is narrow. Let's see an example of AF on the monitor. Always think AF when you see a rhythm that's irregularly irregular in your NCLEX. 
treatments can include calcium channel blockers, beta blockers, or digoxin if the other options do not work. In unstable atrial fibrillation, synchronized cardioversion will be performed. If the patient has a history of AF, expect long-term anticoagulation. Atrial flutter is a rapid, regular fluttering of the atrium. This is as a result of one irritable focus or site in the atria, which depolarizes regularly at an extremely rapid rate. Because of this extremely rapid stimulation, waveforms are produced that resemble the teeth of a saw, called flutter waves. The healthy AV node protects the ventricles from these extremely fast atrial rates. When you see sawtooth pattern, like what we see here, remember atrial flutter. The rate is about 250 to 350. The rhythm is regular. P waves are absent and we only see the flutter waves. The PR interval is non-existent and the QRS complex is narrow. Let's see an example of atrial flutter on the monitor. Here we see an atrial flutter at a rate of 152. The treatment and causes of atrial flutter are the same as for atrial fibrillation. The general rule, if the atrial flutter is stable, we'll be using medications. But if your atrial flutter is unstable, will perform synchronized cardioversion. SVT describes all tachyarrhythmias that originate above the bifurcation of the bundle of his. The rate is 150 to 250. The rhythm is regular. P waves is usually not seen. The PR interval is not measurable. And your QRS complexes is narrow. Let's see what an SVT looks like on the monitor. Here we see an SVT at a rate of about 197. First line treatments for stable SVT includes a vagal stimulation, and if that does not work, we can use adenosine. Adenosine is given by a rapid IV push. If you have an unstable SVT, Synchronized cardioversion can be performed. Let's review heart blocks and start with first degree block. The rate is usually within normal range. The rhythm is regular. P waves are present and there is one P wave for every QRS. Our PR interval is prolonged, meaning more than five small boxes or more than 0 0.20 seconds, but it remains constant. The QRS is usually narrow and there is one QRS for every P wave, meaning one-to-one -one conduction. Have a look at the red highlighted arrows and we see the PR interval is prolonged at about seven small boxes or 0 0.28 seconds. So the main concept that you should remember for your NCLEX is that first degree block is that the PR interval is prolonged more than five small boxes or more than 0 0.20 seconds, but it remains constant. Let's look at second degree block type one. The atrial rate is more than the ventricular rate. The atrial rhythm is regular versus the ventricular rhythm, which is irregular as there are dropped beats. The P waves are normal in size and shape, and the PR lengthens with each cycle, although it may be slight lengthening until you see a dropped beat. Let's have a look here. Becomes wider, becomes even more wider, and suddenly we have a dropped beat. The QR is usually narrow, meaning three small boxes or less. The main concept for us to remember for our NCLEX in second degree block type one is that there is a progressive lengthening of the PR interval until you have 
a P wave that is not followed by a QRS complex, as what we see on the screen. Here we see a second degree block type 2. The atrial rate is more than the ventricular rate. The atrial rhythm is regular versus the ventricular rhythm, which is irregular, as there are drop beats. The P waves are normal in size and shape, and you will find more Ps than QRS complexes. The PR interval is usually within normal limits, but can be prolonged, but it stays constant until there's a P wave without a QRS complex. The QRS is usually three small boxes or more with some dropped QRS complexes. So the main concept that you should remember for second degree block type 2, your PR interval stays constant until you have a dropped QRS. So lastly, let's review a third degree heart block, or also known as a complete heart block. The atrial rate is more than the ventricular rate, the atrial and ventricular rhythm is regular, and there is no relationship between the P waves and the QRS complexes. The P waves are normal in size and shape. There is no PR interval, as the P waves and QRS complexes are not linked to each other. The QRS complexes are usually wide, more than three small boxes or more than 0.12 seconds. The reason for the wide QRS complex is that the block is below the His junction. Keep in mind that in third degree block, the QRS can be narrow, and that is if the block is above the His junction. If you benefited from this video, kindly like, subscribe, and smash that notification bell. We'll see you in the next video. Have a fantastic day.